you know, everybody's favorite is the Jaguar. Yeah. Um, Jaguar is, a lot of folks don't realize that Jaguars are actually native to the Southwestern United States. Um, they were hunted to extirpation in the 1960s and 70s. Um, basically, the U.S. government just wanted to kill every carnivore that we possibly could in order to maximize opportunities for folks to grow livestock. Um, and jaguars um, and other predators like wolves were really demonized and hunted to extirpation. Um, we're at the brink of this really exciting recovery. We've had seven jaguars come back into the United States in the last 20 years. Um, and one initiative that the Center for Biological Diversity works on, um, we put wildlife cameras out in the Sky Islands, and we were actually able to capture the first video footage of a wild jaguar in Arizona just a couple of years ago. Yeah, I saw um, it. I mean, this is a beautiful story. Um, these cats are just stunning. Um, and if we build a border wall, um, we will absolutely be cutting off the nodes that they use to migrate into the U.S. And we will stop any chances that they have of repopulating their, their native terrain. Um, and they belong here. Jaguars belong. Um, they evolved to live here. Um, and it was only because of our short-sightedness and our desire to kill everything wild that we pushed them out. Yep. By the late 1960s, Jaguars were thought to have been eliminated in the United States. A female was shot by a hunter in the Arizona White Mountains in 1963. Arizona outlawed jaguar hunting in 1969, but by then no females remained, and over the next 25 years only two male jaguars were found and killed in Arizona. Then in 1996, Warner Glenn, a rancher and a hunting guide from Douglas, Arizona, came across a jaguar in the Pelanchillo Mountains and became a researcher on jaguars, placing webcams which recorded four more Arizona jaguars. In 2009, a male jaguar named Macho B died shortly after being radio collared by Arizona Game and Fish Department officials. In the Macho B incident, a former ADGF subcontractor pleaded guilty to violating the Endangered Species Act for trapping the cat and a game and fish employee was fired for lying to federal investigators. In 2011, a male jaguar weighing 200 pounds was photographed near Cochise in southern Arizona by a hunter after being treed by his dogs. The animal left the scene unharmed. In September 2012, a jaguar was photographed in the Santa Rita Mountains of Arizona, the second such sighting in this region in two years. This jaguar has been photographed numerous times over the past nine months through June 2013. On February 3rd, 2016, the Center for Biological Diversity released a video of this jaguar, now named El Jefe, roaming the Santa Rita Mountains about 25 miles south of downtown Tucson. El Jefe is the fourth jaguar sighted in the Madrean Sky Islands in southern Arizona and New Mexico over the last 20 years. On November 16, 2016, a jaguar was spotted in the Dos Cabezas Mountains of Arizona, 60 miles from the Mexican border. The farthest north one of these animals has been spotted in many decades. It is the seventh jaguar to be confirmed since 1996. And on December 1, 2016, another male jaguar was photographed on Fort Huachuca, also in Arizona. In February 2017, Authorities revealed that a third jaguar had been photographed in November 2016 by the Bureau of Land Management in the Dos Cabezas Mountains, also in Arizona. Legal action by the Center for Biological Diversity led to federal listing of the cat on the endangered species list in 1997. However, on January 7, 2008, George Bush appointee Dale Hall Director of the United States Fish and Wildlife Service signed a recommendation to abandon jaguar recovery as a federal goal under the Endangered Species Act. Critics, including the Center for Biological Diversity and New Mexico Department of Game and Fish, were concerned the jaguar was being sacrificed for the government's new border fence, which is to be built along many of the cat's typical crossings between the United States and Mexico. In 2010, however, the Obama administration reversed the policy of the Bush administration and pledged to protect critical habitat and draft a recovery plan for the species. The USFWS was ultimately ordered by the court to develop a jaguar recovery plan and designate critical habitat for the cats. In August of 2012, the USFWS 
proposed setting aside 830,000 acres in Arizona and New Mexico, an area larger than Rhode Island, as critical jaguar habitat. And in March of 2014, federal wildlife officials set aside nearly 1,200 square miles along the U.S.-Mexico border as habitat essential for the conservation of the jaguar. The reservation includes parts of Pima, Santa Cruz, and Cochise County in Arizona and Hidalgo County in New Mexico. Let us remember the jaguar is only trying to regain the territory it used to cover long before humans arrived, and especially long before European settlers showed up. The long-standing debate over the reintroduction of large predators to former territory rages on in this case as well, considering this is the largest predator cat in the Western Hemisphere that we're talking about. It is well proven now that predators have a majorly beneficial effect on the ecology of the land by preventing herd animals from overgrazing the plant life and helping improve genetics for prey species. There are solutions at the disposal of ranchers to prevent their own herds from falling victim to this beast's natural predator drive. Just like with the Mexican gray wolf, time will only tell if humans can overcome their fear of predator species and learn to coexist on the land as integral parts of the web of life.